What's up, everybody? My name is Chris, and today in this video, I want to talk to you about the Tentacle Sync E and how to connect it to the Canon EOS R5C cinema camera with its specific timecode port, and also take a look at the timecode settings on the camera. A quick disclaimer before we jump in. I've been working with Tentacle Sync for a bit of a time now, and they have been sending me the Track E and Sync E devices about two years ago. And those have been incredibly helpful in my workflow. And I made a couple of videos about these. I have never been paid by them. I just got these devices. Now they also provided me with this cable, which you need to connect the Sync E to the Canon EOS R5C or any other devices that have this type of connector. But again, I have never been paid by them and they don't see these videos before they are published. So all of the things I share here are just mine to share. Now, when we are talking about timecode and the Canon EOS R5C, there are a couple of things to note. One of the most important ones is that this camera actually does have a dedicated timecode input, which is a huge deal because it means that you're not losing the audio input when you are using timecode with this specific camera. And if you're pairing it with other devices that also have timecode in the metadata versus the audio track, then you can actually use the synchronization feature inside of Premiere Pro, which also can do that directly from the metadata. However, Premiere Pro does not have, currently at least, an option to sync timecode based on audio timecode. In DaVinci Resolve, however, for example, you do have the option to read the timecode from a audio track. So there, you don't necessarily have that kind of a limitation, but it's still nice to know that this is now something that is in metadata instead of on the audio track, if you are using a setup to basically work with that. Timecode is something that revolutionized my work. I would not want to live without it, and I try to always have it whenever possible, even if I'm just filming multiple angles and I have just one clap in the beginning and start the video without other work. Timecode is just that much more accurate and easier to sync in the post-processing. Now, one of the easiest ways to get timecode onto cameras that don't actually have a timecode system or a timecode port is the Sync E by Tentacle Sync. Now, again, this has been sent to me and I have made a video about that. You can check that out up here, but I am still using these. They are a lifesaver in so many ways. I currently have two of them and I plan to get maybe one or two more to use in all of the different setups and with all of the different cameras that I am using. However, there's one cool thing about the R5C as well as, for example, the Zoom F6, which makes this actually not necessarily something that you need for every single device if you are taking into consideration your workflow. The magic here is that devices that have timecode inbuilt and they actually have a timecode tracking quartz inside, they are actually just able to synchronize to the timecode a device like the Sync E basically provide, and then they run with that timecode by themselves. So for example, right now I have the timecode working on the Zoom F6 and I will be setting up the timecode on the R5C. But at the same time, I also have one recording that is here. So that is actually using the timecode from a dedicated device. The Zoom F6, on the other hand, was just synchronized once and then it is running based on that timecode. And I just detach this device so that I can use it for another camera. So that's really cool about all of this. And the same thing is also possible with the R5C because there you also have the option to set it up in that way to basically just take the timecode from an external device. And then as long as you don't do certain things, it will keep that timecode even if you disconnect the camera from the timecode track generator. And there's one more thing that I have to say before we jump into the actual timecode menus of the camera and set that up. And that is that this connector is actually a bit of a tricky subject matter. This here is a DIN 1.0 slash 2.3 connector type. And this actually works by being something that you pull back to basically unlock and you can pull it out and you can push it in and then it is basically just staying in there. So if I put this into the camera and I just push this in there then it clicks into place and I cannot remove it and I can pull, then it actually is being removed from the camera. However, you really have to be careful because I also got sent two other ones from Tentacle Sync and these were prototypes. And the, as you can see here, there are actually major differences. Like for example, this here is a angled one and the major problem with this is actually here in the front, which makes it really, really hard to remove from the camera. But the same thing is also true with this one right here. 
And if you look closely, then you will see that the part where you pull is very different on these two. On this shorter one up here, you actually can only pull on the top part here, so not on the back part right there. And on this one, the whole thing is basically to pull, so I can pull here from the back. This is also something that Canon actually makes you aware when you are unboxing the camera because they have a specific paper manual or a part of the camera video side of things manual printed out and put into the packaging so that you do not accidentally push in one of these shorter adapters because that will be extremely hard to remove from the camera. So please make sure that you are actually getting the right one and I will have it on the screen here, the page from the menu that actually specifies what kind of connector you should be looking for. Now with this, Tentacle Sync has an extremely high quality cable. You can see you have this metal part here for the TRS or 3.5 millimeter jack. So that goes into this and we will just do that right now. So usually, as I've mentioned, I use timecode on the Canon EOS R and there I have both of these with the 3.5 millimeter jack or TRS plug because it just goes into the microphone port straight away. And the same thing is true for the Zoom F6, for example, that also uses a 3.5 millimeter jack. However, here on this camera, that's a different story with this DIN 1.0 slash 2.3. Now you can still use the holder, so you can still use this system that Tentacle Sync devised here so that it basically never pulls out of the Sync E so that it just is in there and it is in there good. And now we can just basically plug this into the camera and I've mentioned before, this just goes in there. So if we turn this over here, you can see the timecode port right there and I can basically just pull this in and push and it clicks and now it's in place and it does not go out of there. And with that, we have it connected to the camera and now we can also go into the menu and over to the timecode settings. I think those are on system settings and then going over a couple of steps, we are on the timecode menu. So system settings and then on the menu page three. Now here you have a couple of options. You can have it set to preset on the timecode mode or regen. You can also say whether you wanna have it at rec run. So that means it only runs when you are recording or you wanna set it to free run so that it always runs as long as the camera is turned on. And when you are running it in rec run, then you have a couple of other settings here as well. And now I'm going to remove the timecode generator again to basically just demonstrate what happens if you do not have the Sync E set up. Then you can, for example, if you are choosing free run, then you also have the options if you wanna have the DF or NDF mode, you can set the timecode manually. So in this case, for example, it's set to 000. And as you can see with free run, it is actually running all the time. As you can see at the top right side of the screen, now we have reset it, but it is free running. So it's always going to continue running. And if I put regen, you can see that there is also something going on there, which means that it's working in a different way. Now, rec run, as I've mentioned, is only running as long as you are actually recording. So that's something that you might also find useful because that way you basically know how long of a time you actually have recorded in total. With the port right here, you can actually set it up in either a in or out way. Now we are going to use it as the in port because we wanna have the timecode from the device go into the camera. So that's why I'm choosing that. And then you also have a couple of settings in terms of the user bit as well as the user bit type. Now I don't usually use these. This is probably something that you use on bigger film sets to basically give more information to the settings or more information into the timecode that you want to record. So you can, for example, here choose the user bit either as a setting, which you set manually, or you choose it as, for example, the time or the date, and you can make those adjustments right here. Now, I usually use this as external because the Sync E is also sending a signal there. So that might be something that is already helpful as well in terms of like synchronizing everything to the same values. Now, for me, I have found that preset free run is the setup that I usually want to use because when I now plug this in and maybe we can just reset the timecode to 000. So now it's 000 and it is free running. So that means it is, will continuously run no matter how you are using the camera and it will continue running as well when you are recording. Now, if I plug this in and the Sync E is already turned on and synchronized, then you immediately saw 
that when I plug this in, it actually just jumped to that exact time that is currently being run on the Sync E device. So now it is on Sync E. The E here at the end is a designation saying that it is external, so that we are currently getting the timecode from an external device. And now if I unplug this, it will actually continue running with that exact timecode so that you can basically just use a device like the Sync E on multiple cameras and those cameras will continue to use that timecode that you synchronized them to. Now in the manual, Canon actually has a couple of things about this specifically because you're not going to get the perfect result if you are, for example, powering down the camera, it will reset there. And you might also find a discrepancy in your timecode when you are going into playback modes or if you are choosing to change your recording quality, resolution, frame rate, and those kind of things. So you might have to recalibrate or re-synchronize your timecode when you are doing any of those things. So keep that in mind, and maybe it still is the best possible way to just use a timecode generator per camera and have one for in each individually one, because these have incredibly accurate clocks built in or a quartz that keeps the time and makes sure that you have as little drift as possible on your video files. Now I'm extremely happy that Canon has decided to put a actual timecode port into this camera. And maybe at some point I will be able to just make all of the cameras that I use an R5C as of right now, I would love to do that. However, budget does not allow for that at this time. So I'm continuing to use the Canon EOS R's that I already have here, and I will continue to use timecode. So for the time being, it is extremely helpful that I can synchronize timecode with this cable and the Sync E, and then also use the Sync E on those other two cameras to be able to later synchronize all of the footage to the exact same timecode setup and also have everything nicely lined up on my timeline and be able to just edit away. Now with that said, if you wanna learn more about timecode, you can check out the links in the description. I will have a couple of them there about the Zoom F6's timecode setup and of course also the other timecode things that I have covered here on the channel. If you wanna check out the Sync E or the DIN 1.0 slash 2.3 timecode connection cable, then I will also have links to the store from Tentacle Sync in the description below. And they actually also have many other cables to connect to all kinds of different timecode systems so that you can find the right one for you. Now with all that said, I hope this was an interesting and helpful video for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and I hope to see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.